Hey guys, in this video, I'll show you how to update the firmware on the 4-in-1 multi-module from Banggood. I already have all the parts needed to do it from a previous project, so I figure why not. I have to warn you that it does require some soldering, basically a header to onto the module itself to connect the, the USB ASP programmer. I wouldn't recommend updating the firmware on the 4-in-1 module unless you really have to. You know, it's basically, if it's not broken, don't fix it. So I'll run through the things you'll need, the software, and I'll show you a little clip of how to solder the header pins onto the module. I'll show you how to connect it to the computer, and then I'll show you how to um, set up the Arduino environment, as well as uh, customizing the firmware. And then finally, uh, we're gonna back it up, back up the original firmware, and then flash it with the new one. And then obviously, we're gonna test it. So the most important piece of equipment you'll need is the USB ASP programmer. This one is from LC Technologies. I got this from eBay for about $5, I think. I think the price has gone down now, but I bought these, bought that a couple years back and I used it for a flight controller that I had to program and it had, um, it needed this uh, adapter as well as uh, I think it was for a Turner G9X. Uh, I had I originally had a Turner G9X and I wanted to put ER9X on there and I needed this uh, USB uh, ASP programmer. Now, most of them are basically 10 pin, so you will need an adapter to convert it down to six pin, which is uh, what the 401 module has. And also make note that these programmers uh, will run in either five volts or 3.3 volts. Most of the time you ch select it by changing the, the jumper position. So make sure that it is in 3.3 volts because if you have it at five volts, you'll definitely fry something because the modules cannot handle uh, anything over 3.3 volts. Another thing you'll need are these uh, 2.5 millimeter pitch uh, straight header pins. Uh, they usually come in rows of two or single rows. I happen to have single rows, so I'm gonna have to need uh, two uh, rows of three. However, if you buy the double rows, it'll definitely make it easier because it'll just be one uh, two by three piece of header pins. Next, I'm gonna show you how to solder the header pins to the four in one module. I'm actually using a very low wattage uh, battery powered soldering iron so you don't need something too hot just enough to melt the solder and you should be good to go um, it takes a lot of practice to be able to solder so you know the only experience I have soldering is back in high school you know in electronics class and even then I wasn't the greatest at soldering and over time you know I just do I just practice a lot and I'm able to uh, definitely uh, get better at it and I recommend that you practice you don't get an old junk uh, PCB board and just start soldering a bunch of stuff and then over time you'll get good at it and it's definitely one of those skills that you need to know as a uh, RC enthusiast you know to be able to do your own soldering and uh, it comes in handy for projects like this. So here is the USB ASP programmer with the cable attached to it and I've also attached the uh, 10 pin to 6 pin adapter. Um, as you can see, the, uh, the actual adapter itself, it has some labels on it, so it'll help you uh, plug it in correctly. There's VCC and ground and MOSI. So basically, if you look at the 4-in-1 module as well, you'll see the same markings on there. And what you want to do is just match up the, um, the pins to the header. I'm actually trying to get the camera to focus correctly here, but it's not cooperating. Once you're sure the pins are all in the correct location, you can push it in and that is how you connect the USB ASB programmer to the 4-in-1 module. Just to be on the safe side, I'm going to actually test the voltage coming out of the USB ASB programmer. And as you can see, it's 3.29 volts, which is correct. If it's any higher than that, then you should uh, fix that because it will definitely do some damage to the 4-in-1 module. I'll be following the instructions on the DIY Multi-Protocol TX Module GitHub page. So you can follow along and one of the first things you're going to do is download the Arduino software, the IDE. It comes in Mac and Windows and Linux. I'm going to be using the Mac version, which is very, it's going to be very similar to the Windows version. The steps will be the same, but when you get to the command line, obviously for a Mac you have a Unix type of commands, whereas on a on a PC, you'll have a DOS type of command, so adjust accordingly, but everything else should be pretty much the same. After downloading and installing the Arduino software, you want to download the multi-module source code and unzip it on your desktop.
Now we're gonna prepare the Arduino IDE environment. You're gonna have to copy copy and paste this part of it into a the board.txt file, which is located uh, here. Basically, browse to this location on the on the Mac and on the PC. On Windows, it's over here. So copy and paste that, and I'm gonna open up the contents of the application for Arduino. So right click and go show package contents and then navigate to the location which is in hardware, uh, Arduino, AVR and you should see a file called boards.txt. Now navigate all the way down to the bottom and paste it here. I've already done it but paste it at the very bottom and uh, you can see that it, the code is there and after that you want to save it. I've already saved mine but make sure you save it and then close the document. Next, we'll plug it up to the computer. Now on a Windows machine, you'll need to download some USB lib uh, drivers. I'll provide a link to it in the description, but for a Mac, you don't really have to do anything. It should just work. Anyways, this is what it should do when you plug it up. The light should be blinking, and um, we're gonna go to the next step. Now open a terminal on your Mac OS X operating system, or if you're on a Windows PC, just uh, open up a command prompt. What we're going to do now is verify that we are able to talk to the 4-in-1 module via the USB ASP programmer and we're also going to back up the existing uh, firmware as well as the EEPROM. This first command will verify that we can talk to the MCU and as you can see it works. So we do have a, a solid connection with the 4-in-1 module. Next we're going to back up the firmware and the EEPROM that's on the 4-in-1 module. So we're going to create a directory called 4-in-1 we're going to navigate into it and then as you do a listing obviously there's nothing. This command will make a uh, backup of your original firmware. It will create a hex file in the 4 one folder. This way if you ever if you make a mistake you can always restore it back to the original. This next command will dump a copy of the EEPROM to your computer. Now that we have a copy of the original firmware as well as the EEPROM, we can go to the next step which is to compile and upload the new uh, multi-module source code. Navigate to the multi-protocol source code file that you downloaded earlier. We're going to go into the multi-protocol folder and then we're going to launch the uh, INO file which is basically where the source code is. Now we're going to set up the board as well as the programmer by going into the Arduino application. So to select the board we go into board and then you want to make sure that multi 4 and one is selected. As you recall we added this in the boards.txt file that was in the uh, Arduino folder. So next what we're going to do is select the USB ASB programmer which is what we're using. Uh, make sure that is selected. Now we're going to customize the firmware uh, source code. Now one of the problems with the 4-in-1 module by Banggood is that it uses the Atmega328 microprocessor and it only has 32k of memory. So we will have to uh, deselect protocols or modules that we don't need in order for it to fit. Uh, the source code has grown in size so in order for it to compile properly and upload to the uh, 4 mo one module we have to edit the, the config.h file. If you recall from Banggood's website when you bought the 4 one module you had a choice of three uh, different versions. You had the FlySky, JR and FRSky and basically when you chose one of those you're actually choosing the um, a module that has a pre-programmed channel order uh, in the, uh, the microprocessor. And the channel order is very important PPM mode as I have discussed in previous videos. Uh, basically in serial mode it doesn't really matter so we're gonna just ignore this part here and leave it AETR uh, which is perfectly fine. And the next section here is the RF modules. This is where um, you can enable or disable certain modules over here is the protocols and I don't actually use the CC2500 module so I'm going to uncomment I'm going to comment it out by putting two slashes this way it won't get compiled 
and you'll end up saving some space. So I'll also take out this, um, this uh, protocol as well. Um, the Devo protocol, I don't really use the Devo protocol so I'm gonna comment that out as well as the J6 Pro. Basically find anything that you're not gonna use and, and basically comment them out so that it helps you save a little bit of space. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna actually leave these active and I'm gonna compile it. And I'll show you what happens when you compile it with um, too many protocols. It'll give you an error message. So next is the telemetry section. In this section, you will define which uh, firmware you're gonna be using for um, telemetry. And if you're using it with OpenTX, you have to uh, remove the comment and if you're using with ER9x or ERSky9x you have to comment it out because the OpenTX uh, firmware actually inverts the telemetry. Save a little bit more space I'm actually going to disable PPM mode because I'm, I don't plan to ever use it in PPM mode I'm just going to use it exclusively in serial mode so I'm going to also comment this out by putting double slashes this way it won't get compiled in. And everything from this point forward deals with PPM mode. So you can just ignore this uh, if you're using it in serial mode, which I am doing. So let's skip to the next step. We've already discussed uh, the programmer being in 3.3 volts. So just double check that it is and uh, or else uh, bad things will happen. Also make sure the rotary switch is in the zero position on the module. If you solder the two pads on it to put it in serial mode, then you don't have to worry about this. Make sure the six pin connector is properly attached to your multi-module and it is connected to your computer. Before we flash the firmware, we're gonna flash the fuses on the microprocessor. It will uh, address some of the things that are mentioned here. Start flashing the fuses, go to tools, burn bootloader, and this process should be really quick and we're going to go through these messages here to show you what's going on. So essentially it's setting the fuses at the top if you look at the command. These are the three fuses I believe that it sets and if you look through the messages you will see that it is it has written to them as well as verified the um, if it's written properly. There are some errors while you're burn, burning the bootloader about uh, not finding certain files, but you can ignore that. It should have successfully burnt the fuses. Make sure that the fuses are set correctly. We will open another terminal or command prompt and run this command. And looking at the results, you can see that the fuses are set correctly. Now we're going to compile and upload the sketch using the Arduino IDE software. But first we're going to verify if this will fit onto the uh, 401 modules uh, 32K. So we're going to click the tools and verify and it will compile it. And if it doesn't fit, it will actually tell you if it won't fit. As you can see, it's actually a little bit too big. It's 100%, but you need to bring it down below 100% since it says sketch is too big. And if you recall, previously, you had to go to the config.h file, and then what you had to do was, un, uh, you had to comment out protocols that you didn't need. So this is to help uh, save space. So as you can see, we're gonna have to remove one more thing. I'm gonna find something that I'm not gonna use, and then comment it out this way. Hopefully it will be small enough to uh, fit onto the MCU. We're gonna verify and compile it again, and hopefully this time it should be uh, small enough to fit, and it is 98%, and we don't have any error messages. Now that we've verified that it will fit onto the module, we are gonna upload it using the programmer, 
And this is where you cross your fingers and hope everything is working properly. As you're writing the firmware, all the lights should go solid and then turn off and start blinking when it's done. The firmware has been written and verified and you are done. After you flash the firmware on the 401 module, we want to make sure everything's working. So we're going to bind it to a Hubson X4 and test it out. Attach the battery to the Hubson X4 and go to the Tyrannus and go up, go to the model setup page and then scroll down to bind. And then what you want to do is initiate the bind. And when the lights go solid, you know that it is bound and now you can test it out by moving the throttle. Throttle active. So that's how you update the firmware on the 4-in-1 module by Banggood using the uh, Arduino software as well as uh, the USB ASB programmer. If you found this useful, comment, like or subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.